Hello, Paul here and Melanie. It's uh, January 31st, 2023, and we are going to talk to you about the Red Elama. Yes, uh, we got this uh, from a friend of ours in Homestead, Florida, named Robert from the Robert is Here fruit stand. It's a famous fruit stand called Robert is Here. And it was Robert uh, Jr. that gave yeah, Robert Jr., well, he sold it to us, <laughs> just in case his dad's listening and doesn't, doesn't, doesn't know uh, what happened. Um, we, we did pay for it, and, um, and it is an amazing fruit. Um, so these grow in pink, and they grow in white, and they're or yellowy. Yellowy. Yeah, they grow, in Australia, they grow in, in gray. I saw a video on it. And so... Um, they're Melanie's favorites. They have a texture of like raspberry yogurt. Is that what they well, say? Flavor. Flavor. Yep. Raspberry yogurt. Yogurt. Yep. And so we're going to cut into this and uh, do a little taste testing. And then um, I'll take you around the kitchen and show you some other goodies that we got at the fruit stand and at another farm. So, um, is it right? Well, is it right? That's always the question with fruit. A lot of the fruit we get today you know, like the oranges and the apples are really hard. If a fruit is hard, it's not, it's not ripe. So you got to leave it out, even the apples and the oranges, until they get ripe. So you think I should have left it another day? Well, we can always pa um, sort of put elastic around it and let it go another day. Try those pink bits and see how they are. Big bite going in there. Good, can I taste? Mm. Just a little one. I'm going to keep talking. Well, that's pretty good. So it does taste like, um, it does taste like raspberry yogurt. Do you want to put an elastic around that one and give it another day or mm -hmm. two, or is it ready to roll? I think it's ready to roll. Okay. So one of the other fruits that um, we got down there is the mame sapote, which is here. And these um, grow on trees. They don't need pesticides. We visited a farm where these grew, and um, they don't use pesticides on them. And what you do is you scratch with your fingernail on one side and the other side, and if they're both sides are bright pink or sort of orangey pink, then you pick them. And this is what they look like on the inside. Be right back. Um, right here. They look like that, and they're really good. Um, really tasty and then um, another fruit that we got uh, from my buddy Steve in Fort Lauderdale are these naysberries and they, they're big ones and little ones that's a little one and this is the bigger ones and these are unbelievable and uh, the squirrels like them too so he has to defend them rather vigorously but this tree with the little ones is just absolutely loaded with fruit and uh, then um, another fruit that we like a lot is the dragon fruit. And now these are available in Publix and Kroger's and e just about every store carries these. And then you probably know that one, but this is a, the canistel or the uh, egg fruit it's called. And um, it's, um, um, it's, it has a taste like um, a hard boiled egg yolk. Um, sort of texture, but it tastes a little bit sweet, and um, it is um, a lot less expensive than most fruits, and um, that you know tropical fruits that is, and it has a good shelf life. So I think you'll start to see this uh, in the supermarkets more and more, and um, it's uh, it leaves a little film on your teeth too, which is a bit off-putting, but uh, I do enjoy it very much, and. Um, so yeah. But it's a miracle fruit. Oh, now, where's the miracle fruit? Yeah, we're gonna. It's in the door. So we're gonna get the miracle fruit out. Do you want to do that in another video or do it in this video? Might as, well, might as well do it. So we're gonna show you the miracle fruit now. And so this is being used for people with long COVID. Those are people that have lost their sense of taste because of the uh, symptoms of COVID. And it's a little berry. And so this has a, it's called the miracle fruit because it has miraculin in it. That's a good, a good reason. But um, 
It also is used by people that are um, taking chemotherapy and they've, they have a metallic taste in their mouth. And so we're, we're seeing just incredible, we're hearing incredible stories about this. And so you can eat one of these and drink some lemon juice and it'll taste sweet. So anything that's sour will taste sweet after you have this. Or bitter. Or bitter will taste sweet. Do you want your lemon juice? Did you take one? Thanks. I have my lemon juice. Okay. So what you do is you put this in your mouth and rinse it around for a couple minutes, swish it around, and then um, you have your sour or bitter uh, food and it will taste different. So it'll taste sweet. That's pretty amazing. But anything else about this? And I'll, I'll take folks around and show them uh, some of the other stuff. Okay. Um, so God, um, oh, God does amazing things. You know, if we had, um, I'll turn it around here. If we had a different fruit every day, it would taste like it would take like 20 years for us to have all the fruits in the world. I mean, that's how many how many fruits God has given us. But you know, we we generally only see certain fruits, and I'll I'll, I'll show you some fruits here on my table because I eat a lot of fruit, um, and. Uh, so this is the Cavendish banana, which you know a lot about. But they also are selling red bananas and baby bananas now, and they're really good. And then the orange. Uh, so these, you know, one of the problems with these is people, you got to wait for it to feel soft. And so you just squeeze it a little. And this is generally how all fruits work. If they're soft, they're ripe. But most people eat the bananas like this, and they taste horrible, and they give you a stomach ache. Um, so it's very important to know how to ripen fruit. And same with the oranges. They should have a soft spot or two on them before you eat them. So I leave them out on my table for a long time and um, try to get them to, to be soft. Um, and then um, this is the Florida avocado, which um, again, you have to, this is just starting to feel soft. And um, these, so there are 40 different kinds of avocado but we only really know the Haas avocado, which is, um, I have some in the fridge, but they're the common avocados that you see everywhere. But this Florida avocado has a lot less fat, a different flavor, and it's just nice to have some variety. Um, so you really only see these two types of avocados in the store. Um, and then grapes, you know, these can often be sour, um, but these are organic grapes. But if you leave them out, they'll get soft, and, and then you can eat them. And then another... Um, uh, fruit that I found in uh, Florida was the star fruit and these are from Robert is here and so uh, this has to be soft and so it's this a little hard so um, I'm letting it soften up some more and um, so kitties like fruit too look at her she wants to come in and have some fruit and then the watermelon is out of season but um, That'll be good. Paid a little too much for it. And then I'll just walk you around the kitchen and show you some um, um, other fruits here. So, um, let's see. This is a, um, a jicama. And it has a taste like a bit like a carrot. It's a root vegetable. And I just cut the skin off the outside. And um, um, that's really sweet and good. And... Um, this is a uh, butternut squash that I'll eat raw. I'll cut it in small pieces. I've cut the skin off of it. This is a purple top turnip that we're getting a lot of in the garden. And it's a radish, so you'll need a little bit. Unless you want to cook it, and then you can eat more. And then this is a Jerusalem artichoke. We have tons of these out in the garden now. So, you know, one of the amazing things about a garden is even in the middle of, in the end of January, there's a lot of food in the garden right now. So right now we have... Uh, the purple top turnips and the Jerusalem artichokes and um, we are offering them to the sick and the poor. Um, a lot of cancer patients are being um, requested by their doctors to have a nutrient dense diet and so these are two foods that fit into that category that are available from the garden even now in, in, in the end of January. So this is a young Thai coconut. Kroger's is selling these. They have water in the middle that we uh, drank already. And then they have this delicious uh, white flesh in the inside. You scrape it out with a spoon. It's uh, just an amazing uh, meal. Um, it has a lot of really um, good qualities to it. And it tastes great. And uh, so a lot of times, you know, nutrition, nutritional foods, uh, 
you know, aren't as palatable. But this is a definite exception. And so Kroger sells these. And it's easy to make yogurt by, um, Melanie has a process uh, whereby she makes yogurt from these. Uh, she takes, um, she blends it with some water and puts um, a, a bacteria capsule. What is it? A, a Acidophilus capsule in there. And uh, you can watch a video on that. And then, you know, we resort to these um, uh, vegetables in the winter because the garden's not producing so many greens. But you can buy this by the pound, and that's really good. Um, and then some other things. I, I made some applesauce here. Oh, there's mushrooms. I like to eat those. And then uh, this is applesauce that I made with cinnamon, dates, and apples. And so it's separated, but I'm going to have some of that. And then, oh, this is what the dragon fruit looks like on the inside. And uh, it's really tasty and a little bland for my liking, but Melanie loves them. And then this is bok choy, uh, asparagus, organic asparagus. And what's the name of this cauliflower type thing? Uh, Romanesco. Romanesco. Look at how, Romanesco. Romanesco. Look how beautiful that is. Uh, so I'm going to eat the leaves. I'll eat this raw. If, um, if it's not too unpalatable, but it's usually pretty good. And then uh, the pineapples are tough here, but we might, uh, we have to let this get a lot riper. Um, and sprouts, yeah, I'm going to do a separate video on those, on these, but um, here we have um, fenugreek, and then this is the Hippocrates mix of sprouts. So there's azuki beans, um, lentils, fenugreek, um, mung beans all in here. And, you know, these are like three days old. But I'm going to do a separate video on these. These are um, chickpeas or gabonzo beans, green lentils. And then back here on my rack, we're sprouting some um, broccoli greens, which were patented as a cancer treatment but the patent was overturned because it's a naturally occurring substance. But there's a lot of commercial interest in these uh, as far as uh, their healing abilities. It's a bit out of focus uh, through the jar, but um, these are amazing and um, they're a little spicy. And then sunflower sprouts are another good one. These are just starting. And then this is something new I'm starting. It's, it's mustard. It's a mild yellow mustard. And so I'm sprouting those. And then, um, the last thing I have, um, I just take um, frozen organic corn and frozen organic mung beans. Uh, no, um, not mung beans, uh, soybeans uh, called mukamami. These are sold at Kroger's, a great uh, healthy um, uh, meal. And then um, something else that I'm doing, um, I'll get it out of the fridge here real quick. Oh, it's already out. Oh, here it is. I've taken the... Um, I've made like a raw hummus with garlic, mustard, be uh, ground yellow mustard seed, and um, garbanzo beans and made a, a really nice hummus there. So, um, yeah, so that, there's some more ideas. We're always looking for good ideas in winter when uh, fresh food is hard uh, to find. come by. Melanie, how's that red alame going along? Very, very good. Yeah, it's... Um, it's it's was it worth waiting for <clears throat> it was thank yeah. you so much robert jr this is just heavenly yeah and robert jr has uh, just finished a marathon he um he credits his um success in that to um uh, a large intake of celery which really boosted his um his uh, salts not sodium chloride salts but um uh, the myriad of other salts that are available in celery so he uh, mainlined celery the week before and had a really great marathon. He called me to thank me for that advice. Um, but thanks for watching our video. And if you have any other healthy food ideas, put them in the uh, comments below. And um, I wish you well on your health journey. And thanks for watching.